Hey. <clears throat> oh. Well, I just ate some lunch. My voice kind of freaked out there. The name's Peter, Peter Pang. It's kind of like a James Bond intro, but I'm just way more handsome and capable in combat. Wait, no audio. Nah, you're capping. You're capping. I can see it. I can see it. You're not going to get me. Oh, wait, all the early birds are here for this. <gasps> wow, it's beautiful. My eyes have never been blessed this much before. Wow, that was, I'm getting emotional, I'm getting emotional. You watching LCK? Oh shit, I was not. I was not. That was that was last night at 1 a.m. What happened last night at LCK? <laughs> Guys, does anyone know what happened last night? Chat? T1 did... The, okay. Let's just watch. I didn't watch. T1 versus HLE. Didn't T1 lose to HLE? Wait, what? It's a rematch, right? Uh, I want to see the full games. Maybe this 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 guy has it. Challenger LOL replays and vods. Okay. Had some massive issues in that series. Losers finals. So who did T1 beat after losing to HLE to then have to replay them again? Going up against Honolulu Esports, so damn. Oh, okay, okay. I saw that one on Reddit actually. That was last week. I really hope so. And that's for me what T1 needs to prove tonight is they've made bigger adaptations than what we saw against T Plus, a much weaker opponent. Now, for Gumi, you see the focus have has been outside. You know what I'm actually curious about? I'm actually, uh, I'm gonna take a look at this really fast. I don't know why, but I've been kind of interested in the data. Um, LPL, no, not LPL. I want to see LCK's viewership. This, this, uh, this play, uh, dude. It's it's not separated by playoffs, is it? It's not separated by the playoffs. It's just wow. That's that's actually insane to think about. LCK. LCK is like. Uh, okay, it's still, but it's still a lot bigger than LEC, but not, okay, I shouldn't say a lot bigger. I think the average viewership for LEC is insane. That's what, that's, that, that that's how I think, like, it's really impressive that LEC has gotten to the point where it's like, it's up in the fucking, you know, the top two leagues It's in the conversation. I don't really know how to, you would describe LPL. LPL is always an anomaly. Sag. Sag. Okay. Just wanted to take a look real fast.
side of his Senna, which he's now banned away. Lucian, Callista, Varus. Those are basically the only picks he is playing right now. He's lost the Callista, he's lost the Lucian, and if you give Viper the Varus early, Guma's not the type of player who likes to play Zeri into that. He's played Zeri one time. One time this entire season. He's 0-1 and one on the... Guma? So Guma doesn't... Yeah, he doesn't play Zeri. The Rek'Sai is already been banned. Thea here is... I mean, that's that's TF top, like 99% chance. Wait, what? He actually picked Zeri. Wait, so Balin is Varus Rel? I mean, there's so much dive potential with his hard like esports composition. Yes, you have the TF, the Talia. Ew. A decent at keeping threats at bay, but I feel like there's just so much. Ew. I would never want to play Varus Rel. Kind of does two different things for T1. On one hand, you have great engagement. I wonder if Guma is going to go cleanse. Like, I, I, I look at their champs, right? I look at their champs, Sejuani, Varus, even Rel is pretty affected by cleanse. And I'm thinking, yeah, it's good. It's good. But Ghost on Zeri is almost mandatory. I, I think if I was playing on stage, I would go cleanse. I think if I was playing a solo queue game, I would go Ghost and try to Ego and dodge. Nah, I'm not sick. I'm chilling. Okay, so Guma did go Cleanse. It's Cleanse Heal versus Cleanse Ignite. In that case, I think that the, the bot lane with Cleanse Heal is kind of advantage, personally. Um, God damn, I fucking, I just, I, th this whole thing with Zayus, like, picking TF top and just, like, winning games is actually going to ruin everyone's solo queue experience, because then you're just going to get solo queue games where your top laner is like, I'm Zayus, I'm Zayus, and they lock in Jace or TF, and they just run at the fuck down. And a very uncomfortable matchup here into a Varus lane. And yeah. I do feel like that gives a ton of agency. Plus the comfort picks you already mentioned does give a pretty massive edge to Hanwha Life. And the mounted engage combo here of Delight and Peanut. And and lane, lane swap. swap. Oh, this is a little bit clever. I feel like it's some... Lane swap, but I, I, I guess I will say um, it makes sense when you have this top matchup and your bot matchup isn't even really winning. You know, like, why, why let Cassante get bullied? R rather just have TF get starved and have a slow up on TF. Wait, what the hell are the casters saying? This is just a lane swap split map against the, against the squishy, diveable carry top. Meanwhile, Cassante cannot be dove on bot. Now you can crash wave two and just deny him two waves right here, right now. No teleport, remember as well, and now doesn't have ghosts. This is a huge win because you know there's no teleport on the twisted fate, so you can get this win. And the fact that he has to back even almost feels worse, you know. If you die, you can just you can just start proxying on wave three here. Usually the jeweler will sit here. The jeweler will sit here as you proxy wave three and make it so these guys can never get back to lane. He doesn't one thing with the TF is we've seen have to stay forever, but once they're finished proxying this way... Wait, what? Fight! Okay, Karia has E level 1. Nice. Yeah. I mean, now now they just need to keep keep proxying, basically. Oh, minus one, minus one, minus one. You want to farm and get the extra gold from your CS, so missing out so heavily in Huddle Life Esports, not even allowing Zayas to play lane 1v1, just really putting him in an uncomfortable spot. Oh my god, Zeka is fucking with that. Now he's to dodge this. Wow. The most unexpected play in a lane swap is always ganking mid, and that's because both junglers' attention and both supports' attention is almost always focused on diving or preventing your top lane from getting dove. So, like, your focus in the game is, like, how can we get our TF to farm a single minion? How can we get our Cassante to, like, survive the dive? That's, like, what both the those, like, duos think about.
So ganking mid is on like nobody's mind for the most part. It was actually very smart that T1 just overloaded mid there. That's also very stupid you could think of as like from the other perspective, Zekka should think about it and realize that TF and Rakan are homeless. No. This is like whatever now, though. Because mid died, I think this whole thing is kind of whatever. You're not going to be able to proxy permanently. I would actually not... I, I, I don't know why he hard pushed that. I would actually not push that. I would just start stacking the wave and make sure that TF can't get XP. That's weird. I think he might be thinking that he needs to base. You, you would only really push this wave right here and let TF farm... If you're focused on, if you, if you want to push in base. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that that is what he's doing. I, I don't really agree with it, but I think it's, it kind of makes sense. To him, it makes sense. Jesus, this guy's missing every Q3. So this is just, of course, three members stacking on the Zeka here who went for his Q3. So doesn't really have anything but flash here. Owner will flash to guarantee the kill. Pretty simple setup here, but the cost is so heavy. Play for, play for five minute Drake. Player who has teleport just mm. feels so bad as Zayas now hits level three here at five minutes. And this is just such a disaster here for T1 in this early game. Now, Zeri getting some additional experience, obviously, bottom side, and does have a lead over Cassante. They're going to have to turn that into a team fight win here. These upcoming dragons potentially to get back into this game. Otherwise, this is just rolling down the hill so fast, this snowball. And the other problem is, because Carrier has just gotten no XP, yes, Guma is higher level, but until Carrier starts... Guma's five and a half, Viper's four and a half. Well, you're not gonna have How are you going to get Drake? Right? We've seen Varus come back to lane with That's actually like, the big, like, huge problem with these kind of situations so is... Um, leeching XP from other lanes just to try and catch up, because... You won't be able to Your AD carry gets screwed on XP sometimes. Rukan is level 1 on the Drake spawn. Yeah, but he'll be level 3 and that's enough for a support. They do get Drake. Weirdly. Isn't it so weird to think that that T1 gets grubs on the side of the level 4 TF? And HLE is getting Drake on the side of the fucking super accelerated Zeri? I actually feel like T1 could 100% have played for Drake there. No doubt in my mind. Like, even though he carries level 2, it, it does not matter. Wait. He's just gonna go He's a flash. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Gamble, thanks for the thanks for the reset, bro. This game is wild. I wonder if lane swapping is actually going to come back in the in the same way that it used to. Looking for some money as well. Yeah, and the only edge you really have is that level advantage for Guma, but you're not really able to capitalize. You're not able to find an all in with the level six from the Zeri, and it's the Light and Viper who have the pressure in the 2v2. So, you know, I feel like you've you've lost any edge you had in the top lane, but the compensation on the bot side isn't enough, isn't significant enough really for a payoff. Oh, wow. That was sick. That was a sick flash trade. Get himself out of there. And so no ultimate and no flash up here for Faker. Definitely a good move. We do have to talk about the fact that T1 are still ahead in gold. Uh, they've still managed to, to fill up those co coffers regardless. But Hamalife Esports are going to have a very Oh, peanut. Steals away the red buff here as well. Perfect timing. Literally there at the very last possible second. Dash does come forward. Uh, Zeka does carry a stun back with him as he does rebind the soul. But Yone... Kind of okay with how things go in oh. the matchup. There is a Q connecting here from Doran, who doesn't have the all out. They cannot kill Doran. I think this is mainly just to stop Doran from doing too much more. Dash is on they cannot kill him, bro. He will 1v2 them. The you just have to kind of babysit Zayas here. Lane swapping seals like a lot of work. Doran, especially if his ult comes up, it's going to be very dangerous. Hmm. You know, this is so free for... I would say, like, I think you should commit to the lane swap if you're going to do it. Like, I don't think you should just do this half-assed thing where you're like, we lane swap, and then we, you know, 
you get to four minutes and this guy has no real way of ever getting back into the game. It doesn't it doesn't make sense to me to let him back into a situation where he's just like kind of free farming against Cassante. Like he gets to back to this point where he's behind, but like it's fucking Cassante. This is he's not playing versus like Jax. He's not playing versus Camille. Like he's probably going to just leech XP and fall behind, but like not be useless. I would way rather have seen people d commit to the lane swap like fully um, and just keep mismatching the game until you get to certain one. Actually, I'll show you guys something. TL versus Damwon 2019 uh, group stage. Here it is. Uh, this game. This game we... What was I thinking? I'm trying to remember here. Oh, okay. So this is a game where we have Scion versus a uh, super scale. This is like Nuguri fucking first strike carry tops. Um, and so we have, a, a, we just have a strategy where we lane swap against um, a carry top with Scion and Scion executes. I'll show you guys. He does Raptors. He gets down to one HP. I think they're still race at this point, actually. They're, oh, no, they're chickens. He executes to red, and he takes red, and then he walks bot lane. And uh, the whole time, like, this is a squishy top laner similar to TF that needs a lot of gold that is really, really vulnerable to getting dove early. So we are, like, fucking him over, and Scion is perfectly fine to farm bot lane. He can actually survive a dive like 1v3 because he's Scion. Uh, even if he does die, he'll get all the wave and then he'll TP back with his passive. So what does the enemy team do? Um, they send, they know this, like they read the situation. So the same thing is happening in the T1 game. They send their support top. And the problem that we end up with here, I, I don't know if you can... If you notice, our jungler is still level two, so we cannot do the same proxy strategy as what happened in the T1 game. So even though we fucked him over here, in a way he bought him he bought his team some time, and because our jungler is only level two, we actually let their support and jungle. We cannot proxy anymore. We cannot just like stand here and fight them to the death. Um, actually, maybe we could. We could have tried, but in in the game we definitely thought we couldn't because our jungler is only level two. So we have to back off and let him um, get to the wave. And that's like, I think that's like a failure. Basically, I think like anytime you get in these situations, it's, it's a failure when you just let this guy um, touch minions and farm. And this game ends up pretty weird. We end up like pushing and swapping back and kind of similar to um, kind of similar to what we we're talking about, like in the T1 game, we play for the early Drake and it just goes terribly. It goes, it goes t horribly. Um, yeah, I think, I think what I learned from this game is that we need to execute and like commit to the swap. This is, this is weird though, because we're not supposed to lose this fight. First one is going to be a mountain here. We'll see exactly what soul we're going to get. But Zeus here, and you don't really have the potential to kill Doran, especially if his ult comes up. Kleptomancy was cool. Yeah, it was cool for everyone using it. It was not cool for anyone playing against it. On the player cam as well, in that moment, he's just shaking his head. He knows he's not playing League of Legends. He's not allowed. They said no. And, you know, he's just denied additional farm here. Slow walking back to the lane. Look at his experience bar. He's two thirds to the Destiny. If your destiny is to lane and gets all outed again, who cares anyways? So this we have to back one more time. The lack of teleport, you're the coal by the status coal you'll ever see in an inventory here. As they've just been duped early, the level one lane swap, so incredibly impactful here. And yeah, gold lead for T1 still, part of it that first blood, but it's diminished quite significantly down to just 200. And a 5v4 game, I think, says it all. If Zayas can't actually get farmed, can't actually be relevant, doesn't matter if T1 maintain a gold lead for now, it's not gonna last. Yeah, Doran just trying to push him away from experience, and that is going to be successful. The thing is, he has no idea. Commit. Commit to the proxy, bro. Commit to it. Oh. Wait, why didn't Viper? Oh, he doesn't have ults. 
Oh my god. Zekka is inting? Wow. Oh, Viper did that blind, by the way. No vision. He did that blind. You're a fucking madman. Wow, Viper played this really well. I want to see how it happened again. So he gets... Violated. He gets violated into a Talia W. And he cleanses the stun. He cleanses the stun, flashes into turret. It's so funny watching TF just like walk up to a fucking level 9. Three level difference on top and he's just like walking up and trying to beat him up. Dorn must have a shit ton of gold. The difference in top lane gold is 500. Wow. A play like that actually just works. Oh shit, Viper is so fucking dead. He is so dead. He is so dead. They're so they're they're so connected. T1 is so connected on every play. And when I watch what HLE is doing, it's just like, bro, like one person's entering river, the other uh, someone else is clearing a ward, someone else is ten seconds away. There's no connection between the players. They're just kind of each of them doing their own thing. Also, I've never seen Edge of Night Rush on Varus. I'm not sure how strong it is against Vi. Vi can ult Varus, and then TF can ult to break the shield. Or Vi can just smite right before her ult hits. So the Edge of Night is actually quite useless against Vi. Because even when you have it, if she has smite, it'll, your, her ult will still connect. Yeah, I'll probably watch. I'll probably watch the series. I might start skipping if, um, like, just going to the highlights. If the games are slow, but the game is actually pretty insane right now. So many like little interesting choices everyone's making. It stops gold card chain. How? How does it stop? How does it stop anything? I don't understand. What what does Edge of Night block this game except for Rakan's engage? Because the second TF ults, your Edge of Night breaks. Sports, but in this situation, T1 have bought time, which is 
so valuable for them. And the fact that Guma is this strong already it just means he has to be respected so much in these team fights. And the thing is, even though there's a lot of engage, even though there's a lot of lockdown from one of my esports, Fnatic vs BDS was absolute cinema. You gotta watch Kato's stream of it. What uh, what like stage of playoffs is it? Is it like winner goes to MSI? Oh, okay. Seems like a lot of that is happening right now. This is losers finals too, right? I think so, yeah. And the finals are tomorrow. That's that's sick. Wow. What slowed him there? Was it was it celestial opposition? It's this item, right? This item right here. Bro, that's so random. It's so random. Like, I don't even know how to play around that. Like, when when delight takes some damage, it like pops after like a short delay. Some of the stuff in this game, it, I find it extremely hard to calculate and make a plan around. Like, like that right there. Like, I bet Karia is thinking like, "Fuck, what slowed me?" And then he's like, "Oh, okay, it was the item." And he's like, "Well, like, what would I even like do differently next time?" You know, because that was actually a good play by him. Fucking weird, bro. Trade back as far as turrets are concerned, as that top one does fall down, and so we've reached basically gold parity once again. Two drakes in comparison to about 500 gold here uh, for T1, and so very even here in this mid game. I think, like you guys were talking about, the fact that Gumiushi is so strong, it's a clear win condition for T1. How my life esports though, they just want to get into these team fights. They want to be able to try to lock down this area. Oh, he is so fucked. He's so fucked. Maybe we don't pick. Maybe we don't pick fucking uh, Yone against champs like this, where they're like click stuns everywhere and specialize in countering like squishy dashing champions. Suddenly you're dealing with three tanks and a virus, and it isn't that on her virus, so the ability to have that sort of sustained damage. Fuck, owner is so good, man. Every play he makes is just like the right play. It's like perfect timing as well. Wow, he did it again. He did Q flash. He didn't die in that initial play. A lot of this is due to vision that T1 set up after that attempted all in there from Karia after Herald. They had so many wards that where are Hanwha Life's wards? Where, where's the vision? Where's the shadowing there for Zekka? He has no one. Fucking Guma is like just piss farming this entire game. 200 CS at 16. 17. And with that I don't know. I feel like if Cassante is a part of the fight. Still doesn't have teleport, of course, but does have his HLA should still win. They're down in gold, but it's really deceptive because of how strong Sante is right now. I feel like this, like, one to two item, uh, one to like two item sort of like window for Cassante, he's like, he's just god. Like, he does so much damage, he's unkillable, and if you ever mess up a team fight against him, he'll clean you up. Easily dodgeable, but actually it looks like T1, you know, kind of shows you the priority what it is at Kevtech Soul. Five members upon like esports group up, T1 don't even care. Yeah. They'll just look to get pressure in the side lanes, look to try and cement more for lead, bring Zayas back into the game. Faker is going to teleport out mid and maybe make a push for this T1. Yeah, they can actually wrap around here and potentially look to die Viper. T1 just playing the map way better than Hanwha right now, bouncing the way back into this game so quickly. They won't get the turret, but still a great response here from T1, getting a lot of value out of Hanwha, getting soul point for a soul. Uh, <clears throat> I don't know about that one. Uh, what did T1 realistically even get? Here, 
HLE plays hard for Drake. They have both top and bot pushed out. They end up blowing Faker's TP, losing nothing bot. They didn't lose a single thing, by the way. Faker TP's mid, they don't lose mid. Yone TP's top to defend top, they don't lose top. So HLE loses nothing. They lost no jungle camps, they lost no turrets. They actually blew a TP and spent one. So it's even on TP's and they got Drake. <clears throat> I think I think HLE macro there was like pretty good because they, they primed both side waves on a like deep pushing both sides before Drake so they would lose nothing when they went for Drake. The timing was like pretty good by them. I think a lot of teams would actually lose an objective there. They blew two TPs? Uh, oh, I guess Doran TP'd earlier to group. I think it's totally worth it to get on soul point for that. It's a bit of a sh shame it's Chemtech though. It's like so, it's so lame when you, you start sacking Drakes and you get the shittiest one possible. Still though, you have to do it. If you're the team that's getting outscaled, and I, I think HLE gets outscaled pretty hard. Triple tanks, Poke Varus, and Yone. I'm not really vibing with that late game. You need to stack Drakes or you're going to lose. That's true. Chemtech on Cassante is really good. But, but chat, like... Riot has... Riot has made Chemtech soul so bad for so long. Ever since it was in that ridiculous one where you turn to a zombie when you die, which everyone hated that one, by the way. That one was like disgusting. It was so it was so toxic. Then they changed it to whatever this is, and they still have not found a way to make it good. And I'm just like thinking, if you work at Riot and you're trying to balance a game, and one of the souls everyone knows is just horrible compared to the others. Why don't they just change it? At least try something new. You don't have to just fudge the numbers. You could, like, make it do something else. I Navori delay on Zeri worth. Oh wow. He's going last was for third. Jesus. I actually do not think that that's worth no. I definitely don't. It's um I think it's less damage than Navori. To have Lord Dumpster, even against triple tanks, it's still l less damage. Ain't no way it's the same as tanks. Oh, it is. It definitely is. Because in a realistic situation, Navori is going to let you get more Ws and more Es off, which is going to amount to more realistic damage than just spamming Q on the closest target. Lord Doms has no AD. It's like 35. It might have been buffed to 40. And Navori is at 65, so... And does an Amplify, like, on all of your abilities. This fight's going to be important. He's going to have to show why he was the one given the advantage in the early game. Yeah, everyone is setting up for this. And I think a big thing with Honor Life, when they were having their successes early in the game, they were kind of chaining Summoner Beans together, you know, Ow. taking Faker's... I think like, it's about just being realistic about the game. The first thing is you're not only ever hitting tanks, and the second thing is 
LDR is like a damage amplifier when you're doing damage. If you don't do any damage to begin with, it you do 30% more of nothing, which is not very much. But if you do 30% more of a decent amount, th that's starting to mean like, oh, okay, I'm doing like big damage. Whoa! Bro, Zekka spends every single fight just, just insta-dead. Wow. Is that Baron? Actually, gets sold, but T1 should get Baron. But why why is Zekka not able to just E every single time he gets uh violated? Oh my god, Peanut always steals these though. Let's see. Nah, he he, he won't. No, nah, no, nah, he won't. He won't. Oh my god, he tried so hard there. They were looking for on the back of that dragon fight now with a 5,000 gold lead, and this setup was so good. You know, the wall comes in for some disruption. Wait, is it must be really hard to do, but is it's a real mechanic to use the Yona E snapback to immune vise ulti, right? Why is Zeka never even trying it? When I when I watch Zeka, he like never even tries to outplay these engages on him. He didn't see Rakan over on him, I guess. Yeah, I think Peanut might be the best jungler ever to win worlds. Up there with the Smithy, of course. Rakan was the start of the chain CC, yeah. I'd rather be the team. I'd rather be the team with more scaling and 6k gold up. Than the team with uh, Chemtech Soul, four Drakes. I think if it was a different Soul, I'd rather be the team that's six kickled down with like Hex Tech Soul, but unlucky. God did not want them to win. I think Hex Tech is overall the best. Infernal is in there. I think Ocean is in there. Sometimes I feel like Mountain Soul can be a little useless, a little useless, but, uh, you know, the weakest two, in my opinion, are still Cloud and, and Chemtech. Wow. I mean, watching HLE play, it makes sense that they lost the series. I think Zekka might need to be reported for this game. His build, Bork in a shield bow, his gameplay, I don't know what he's thinking. Statement ulti. This is a point where it starts to look so suffocating for Honor Life Esports, where every time they're looking for this engage angle, they're just being marked, and it just feels like it's it's so hard. Someone goes in, but there's the Unraveled Earth, which blocks all those dashes. When they look for an angle, like, look how hesitant uh, we see Zekka being here. Immediately <laughs> dashing back, he knows the threat that can come out from the opposite Oh my side. god. Owner goes for an ult on the rel, and it's completely fine, but everyone in Honor Life Esports knows if they step, even a step too far, as we saw happen with Delight, you just get deleted. He's There's betting on the games like Otani? What, what is that reference? Uh, control for the side of T1. And when you're in I saw that just suffocating. that baseball player, Shohei Otani's agent, stole like $20 million or something. It was like a very large amount of money. So like... Is that guy ever gonna get his money back? When you get when you get like millions of dollars stolen from you as like a professional athlete or professional anything, some, someone steals that shit from you, right? It's not like the government is just gonna come. It's not like a fucking principal comes in and is like, okay, here's your money back. Like you have to like get it back from that person, right? It's just gone. 
which is so fucked up. Like, there's no, like, justice, you know? Like, okay, like, yeah, the guy goes to jail, right? He, he, his life is ruined because he did something, he, he fucking stole millions of dollars from someone, but, like, the guy who got the millions of dollars stolen from him doesn't get his money back. Not like he's gonna fucking file a lawsuit against the guy in jail and get his money back. He signed a $700 million contract. He's fine. I mean, look, even when you have, even when you have a contract that big, like tens of millions of dollars is still tens of, but, but I agree, like he's gonna be fine, you know, he's still eating good. It's still a lot of money though. I didn't know it was 700 mil in his contract though, that's wild. Viper can hit a few arrows here before the fight breaks out, especially onto Faker or Guma. There may be a world that's going to pick up that fourth item now. The player was the better and the guy was the fall guy. The player, the 700 mil... Wait, wait, hold on. This, the guy with the $700 million contract, he's the one betting? Why? That's addiction. That's mental illness. Oh, it's a suspicion. Okay. It's a conspiracy. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm gonna be honest guys like i think like betting and shit like that it's either it's either a mental illness or it's like a way for people to I just get excited. I, I see a quick cloak feel like they have like control over their financial destiny when they're when they're in like dire straits you know it's like you're, you're down to your last like few thousand dollars in your bank account you're like you know i'm gonna fucking strike it big you know go big or go home um or, or you're just addicted to it and i i feel like if you have a 700 million dollar contract you gamble for fun, right? You're either, you either gamble for fun or you gamble because you're, you have like something wrong with you in the, in the brain. I hate betting. Anyway, switch gambas up. Facts. The adrenaline rush. Yeah. But bro, he's competing at the highest level of Major League Baseball. You, like, does he really need the adrenaline rush? Oh shit! That was an insane engage by fucking the wait. Wait, they they lost. Wait, they lost. GG. GG. Bro, that was that was honestly kind of a lifeless game by HLE. Like they got four drakes, but Jesus Christ, bro. Wait, I like they lose? <laughs> There's no fucking way. Do you want to say 10k gold with the supers? They actually lose this game? Seriously? No. No fucking shot. Let's see. Let's see. Guma Zeri is not the best. I, I I just no. I I think I think like Guma on Zeri just doesn't fit T like what T1 likes to do sometimes because Zeri is a very AFK and passive champion for a very long time. Bro, that was so fucking crazy. That was like an anime. That was like an anime moment. Like, Sejuani flashes in with Elder. He flashes in. The fucking dragon is unleashed. The wings are on him. He's about to unleash this like fucking Super Saiyan Kamehameha. And then he shits his pants and dies, sadly. And it doesn't go off. Fuck, that was actually such a blue ball. I feel bad for Peanut there. Dropped the ball there, 10,000 gold now behind. 
And you know, Zeka was just so close to hitting Guma with that ultimate. And you know, he, he was so close to going down without that. It was an easy secure. I mean, I'm not sure that would have been enough with Zayas and Fakus. I mean, Sejuani is a useless champion. Changed my mind. Sejuani is so fucking bad. She's literally just a meatball. She gets countered by Cleanse, Mikhail's, any, anything. Like, just, she's so easy to kill. She's not even tanky. She doesn't do any damage. I think... You pick her because you have double melee top and mid, but ultimately I feel like there's just better options. I literally, you know, if you have double melee top and mid, I'd rather have a ranged jungler. You know, I'd rather have like a kindred, uh, probably not a kindred this game because that would be completely int, but um, I'd rather have like, like a, fuck, actually there's no ranged junglers. I changed my mind. There's no, there's nothing. Now, you're not going to pick kindred or graves this game. No, you're not. Oh, an Ivern! Yes! Actually, an Ivern would, would do great this game. Seriously. An Ivern, spamming shields on the double melees, on the, on the engagement. Like, that's actually a great supportive champion with real CC that's not affected by Merc Treads or Tenacity or Cleanse. I mean, the root is, but the knockups are not, and the slows are not. Can Peanut play Ivern? It takes a lot of skill. I, I think that if Peanut tried and practiced for at least a few years, he might be able to pull off an Ivern full clear. The micro might be too much for his old hands. His arthritis could act up, but maybe he can find a way. He needs some. He needs to watch some Tyler One vods ASAP. The timing of the summoners are all coming back up. Guma's flash is going to be up soon. Carrier's flash is going to come up soon. Everything is... Wait, wait, guys. So tonight, T1 is playing Gen G. Is that what's happening? It only took Tyler 1 2000 games to learn the champion? Peanut might be able to do it in 1900. Tyler 1 has the opposite of a learning disability. He has a learning... Hmm. He's, he's a bit of a prodigy is the best way to put it. Prowess. He's a savant. But without the, like, other word that usually happens before savant. He's built. <laughs> He's built differently. Who who started build differently, bro? Like that that is. The best nickname. Oh, Pokeballs did. No, you're really useful, bro. Let's keep it up. And T1 with a little bit of a Sejuani has a... You know what they need to bring back to Sejuani? At level 16 or some shit, she needs to have get her, like, fucking AoE ulti back. Do you guys remember back when Sejuani first came out? Her ulti was actually an AoE stun. So if they were clumped up, three people, four people, five people in one spot, they would all be stunned. That's what they need to bring back to Sejuani so she is a real champion. It's his first game of her con the season. Uh... And he's played so many, he's, he's right now, Sejuani ults one guy for like one second, and that's it. That's her CC. Yeah, she can spam E, but it's like... Oh, oh wait. Zeus is trolling. What? He ulted on fucking Viper. Viper's still alive? Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Where was Guma? This comp, four melees and a poke Varus. This comp, front to back. Front to back. All you have to do, one shot, like, not, not even one shot, just... Just fight and kite together. What do they do? They dive the poke bears. I think Viper has a fucking global taunt. 
I think Viper Viper probably DM'd every single one of T1's girlfriends before this match. So they were like, yep. Fuck it. Get his ass! Oh, shit. What the hell? We lost? Yep. Dude. They totally agree. Could not agree more. All you have to do is hit the closest target with a six item Zeri. And this, <laughs> the poke Varus is not going to match the output of a six item Zeri ever. And especially not a six item Zeri backed by TF, backed by Talia. These champs do so much damage front to back. T1 has no front. All they have to do is CC and, and walk away. The fight will be started, trust me. They outrange the enemy team has to dive in. Between the two comps, like, which one which one has more range? Technically, Varus has the most absolute range, yes. But it's one range champion versus three. The HLE's comp obviously has to dive in. Anyways, that's how they lose. That's pretty crazy. They might be able to defend their inhibitors at least until the Elder drops. Yeah, no. gotta be so careful about trying to look for it and engage here as T1. Can Zeri ride the whole Talia wall? That's a great question. Can she? I don't think so. I don't think you can ride on on terrain like that. You can't ride on Anivia's wall. You can't ride on Jarvan's uh, wall. And you, 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 when you E all over Talia's wall, it doesn't really count. Not something that we've had to talk about really either as Hummerlife will now move towards this inner turret. I didn't think about it for a sec because it's happened to me a lot of times where I'm like thinking about it and it just it does the short dash it doesn't actually do like the wall ride oh gg 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 Gumiyushi on Zeri is just cursed to never win. Straight up. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if Guma plays good or bad. Gumiyushi Zeri. It's just never. It's not going to win. They don't win these. They won with a negative goal. Yeah. Oh my. Oh my. Owner. Boner, no! Boner, no! Wait, 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 wait! It's a Guma moment! It's a Guma Yushi moment! Oh! No, it's not. It's not a Guma Yushi moment. I'm sorry. That was so crazy that HLE wins that. And now we will okay okay let's watch uh let's watch highlights let's watch highlights now game two highlights Viego, definitely not what i saw coming in this one and that is a tough i personally would have single-handedly carried that as zeri but i understand why give she just wasn't as good you know i'm, I'm just gonna try to stay humble here we, i probably would have just barely barely carried that game but Dude, bot lane's playing Senna Sejuani. What the fuck is going on? This is a funny, um, this is like a funny top matchup that I see. Zach versus Rek'Sai. Wow. It's because only only Zach can match Rek'Sai's stupid in like lane sustain. They both have like ridiculous amounts of sustain, and I think Zach actually is just so much more useful than a Rek'Sai. Oh, nice Q by Kyria. Get out of there. Wait, owner? 
Ward goes down. Peanut, I believe, is going to spot that as we can see right there. Oh, wow. Guma with the cocky movement. Guma with the cocky movement. Jesus. One of them for Peanut here. Teleport back from Carrier. And now Ona might have an opportunity. DP back. 2v2. I think I think T1 wins this now hard. Wow, nice Q flash. That was... Oh, okay, okay. Just cleanse? Seriously? That's it? Wow! No, not just cleanse. Wait, wait, wait. Sorry, I have to go check that again. How many autos did they get on Viper? One. Two. Oh my god. That's a kill. So Dwani's not useless early, obviously. Did he ult right before? Wait, Dor- How come Doran always shits on Zayus? Wait, hold on. Hold that. I changed my mind. Hold on. Oh, is Faker ready? Oh, he wasn't ready. Q flash three? Arrow hits- Oh my god. Actually beautiful engaged by HLE. Q flash on three. You are not long for this world, sir. No, you are not. Oh, oh, ow, 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 oof. Oh, yo! And Zeka was in a call in Silas player. What do you expect from him, guys? I can't believe he lives that. Oh! Wait. He got it. He got it. I was going to say minus one. They have a Varus who's rotating over. They don't have to hard engage unless it's on to the package list Faker. He's got it on this angle now. Package. Package. El Package. Woo! Wow. 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 They committed Rex ITP though. Zach is getting huge. I think I think Zach against Poke Varus sounds like a nightmare for the Poke Varus. Wait. Oh my god. Oh my god. He has Aftershock. Wait, it doesn't matter if he has Aftershock. He's just fucking dead. Wow, he's almost killing Zekka though. Oof. Well, there goes your lead. Dude, what the fuck is this champ? He's he's just, he's wait what he's he's, he's just unkillable or what? What is this Rexai tankiness? Oh my God, Faker's getting shit on. Oh my God, he just Vulc melee on. Oh my. Oh my dear Lord. What is going on? Is actually just the best? Okay, never mind. He won us the best. Oh. Reunion. Owner's resetting. Owner's resetting. Okay, never mind. He didn't get that next one, though. Dude, Zayas is unkillable. Look at him. Like, no one's dying. Literally. Nobody's dying. Oh my god! Rek'Sai's out! <laughs> And Viper is dead. He's like, wait, what's going on? Am I winning? Am I losing? And I'm dead. Yo, Rex is back to half HP. He was spending the whole fucking fight tanking. He's back to half HP. Poke Varus free hitting Zach, dude. He's never gonna kill him. I promise. I play Poke Varus against Zach, and I want to fucking end it. Yeah, he's going lethality Varus with lethal tempo. Yes. My God, Zach is just. Zack is just a problem. Oh! Oh my god, on the pink word? No, that, no, you didn't have to do him like that. No, dude. Like, where did that pink word come from? Dude, whoever put this pink word actually killed Viper. Look at this shit. Barely slowed. Max range slow. Max range Zack Q fucking slam dunked on the ward. Jesus. Oh my goodness, yo, if that happened to me, guys, I'm slamming my keyboard. 
I'm throwing my headset. Watching the highlights is actually pretty fun, right? I just like watching the fights. The macro is oftentimes pretty repetitive, actually. At the highest level, the macro, like, it, the game is pretty easy to understand. Did he mean to E in there? I don't think he did. I actually think he might have misclicked. What the fuck? Oh! Holy shit! Viper flinched there. He's like, ugh! I don't want that. Oh god. Oh god. Baker is perma meleeing them. Those are some aggressive vaults. But it's Faker, you know? You can't really flame him. You can't be like, oh dude, what the fuck is Faker doing? Because, you know, it's Faker. W Max? He thought Rel was going in with Hex Flash? I don't know, bro. Did he? Okay, yeah, I mean, he, it's, it's either a mislick or he thought something really different was going to happen. Oh. He's dead, anyways. That was a complete waste of Flash. Pretty people top, though. And Vino ulti. He one might be able to force end 4v5. Ooh, ult to cancel? I don't like that that much, but we'll see. You're not really going to end just because you canceled one guy with ulti, and now you don't have it for the fight. Oh, Peanut's getting his ass beaten. He's trying to take the... He's, he's trying so hard to take the gate. He's like, please let me out. Please. Said it didn't cancel three. She canceled one. If you're canceling three with ulti, that's great. But she's canceling one. My God, Zach is so big. The fuck? What the? What the fuck is this champion? What the fuck is this champion, bro? Like, dude, I've been telling you guys, like, Zach is so broken. What the fuck? What the fuck am I watching? He's just unkillable, jumping in, just spamming max range Qs if it hits the guy's dead. He's taking the turret the whole time. Dude. Oh my god. Nah. He's, by the, you know, he's just not taking damage. <laughs> I think we need to cut it out with the poke Varus. I'm not kidding, guys. Like, the poke Varus is not it. Game three highlights. Zach did most damage as well. That's kind of top lane sometimes because there's so much fighting. Oh, I like the Jinx. I like the Jinx. If I was in a playoffs match and the games were kind of sloppy, I would definitely want to play Jinx. If the games are clean, if the games are played really high level, I probably would dot to Jinx. Like, I wouldn't want to play it, but if, if you feel like it's going to be some sloppy toppy, Jinx is great because if you get one free kill, if you get accelerated at all, the dividends are crazy, right? Like, it, you, if you get if you get a random gold injection, either a free kill, a free shutdown, some plates, and you get accelerated as Jinx, you will 1v5. <clears throat> but if nothing happens, if, if no, like, lucky instances happen for you, I don't think Jinx is very useful, actually. Um, if in dead even game, it's kind of tough. Senna or my god. My god. Imagine winning a championship playing Senna. <laughs> Tui. Wait a second. Yeah, no, I mean, sometimes it, sometimes you just got to be dirty like that, guys. Sometimes sometimes you just have to you just have to play Senna. You just have to play Sona Taric, And you just have to collect that dub. You know, like, I, I can't blame Guma at all. That's just how it goes. What the? What the fuck is happening top? 
Who wins? It looks like Cassante can win. It, it, oh, he can't see that. Wait. Ghost? Yo, abduct somebody. Oh, that was... Oh, Zayas, you're so good. Oh, my God, Zayas, you are so good. Holy shit. He broke their ankles, dude. He broke their ankles so hard. What? Replay that after this team fight. After this team fight. Okay, Zayus is gonna give Viper a reset. Once once Jinx gets reset like this, it's over. Okay, they have to disengage and run. Jinx does no damage there. Yeah, she has dog shit items. Okay, that fight's over. He gets hooked, right? Lantern goes to Gwen. Kind of a mistake. I think he should probably go to someone else. Hooks away into the box. The box hits the ignite hits. Okay, now he has he has ghost, ulti, and W and E, right? He has everything. So he channels W. Dodges the E. Oh my god. Oh, Jukes the ulti. Ult somebody back in for the like, dude. He played that. He played that so good. He played that so good. He played that so good. Holy moly. It was clean. Okay. Let's see what's happening next. I skipped the team fight. We already watched it. It was pretty whatever, honestly. Okay. Nice. Re wow. Wow. The reaction time by owner to do that. These guys are insane. These guys are absolutely insane. Like, the reaction time? It's not that impressive if if we think about it in absolute terms, right? But but I think when, when Sejuani is that close to you, reacting with ulti like that is pretty sick. It's pretty sick. I think, yeah, like, in NA, that would probably not happen. It's, it's, it's just so good. These guys are just like next level players. Pressure makes diamonds, guys. Pressure makes diamonds. Gumiushi's like 1 HP right now. Wait, what? Somebody got a fucking... Gwen gets abducted over the wall. The hook hits... Oh, but they have no damage. Dude, I'm telling you guys, Viper does no damage because he's not accelerated. Oh, oh, oh shit. Zayus ins, Zayus ins that. Zayus ins that. Wait. Oh, okay. Okay. Flash or flash. Good play by Delight there. No, 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 no. No, look. Oh my, oh my god. Oh my god. Look at, look at Zoot, uh, fucking Viper's items. Look at this Jinx's items. If your ADC builds like this, report him ASAP. ASAP. Hey, guys, what do I always tell you? What do I always tell you on Jinx? If the enemy team has a lot of melees, you don't go last list per second. You go runons. It's so much better. It's so much better. I promise you. I promise you a million times over. It is so much better. That might that dude that that made me cringe a bit. Oh yeah. Wait, we just start Baron randomly? Five people alive, we just start Baron? Okay, Doran's bot. Like, Gwen's bot with no TP, so it doesn't make sense. But isn't that just like a 50 50? Isn't, is, isn't this realistically, guys? Like, just just be, just be like, let's, let's keep it real here. This is just a 50 50. Double smite with spell book. Oh. Holy fuck. 
So it's it's not a it's not a 50-50, but it's still like it's there's still a good chance that Peanut will steal it, right? Like even against double smite, there's still a decent chance. It's the non-upgraded smite, I'm pretty sure. Is isn't this the 600 smite by the way? Or or does he get the 1200? It's it, oh, it's still 1200? It scales with level? Wait, what? So he gets a 1200 smite? Hmm. It scales with the number of times he's. I, I don't know. I don't know. If it's 1200, or if, even if it's 900 on that secondary smite, then yeah. I, I could. I, you know what? I'm going to give it to T1. That was pr that's a pretty good play. That's a pretty fucking good play. It It's really advantaged for them. If, if it's an upgraded one. If it's just a 600, like, measly 600 smite, I feel like random shit can hit for harder than 600 on, on Baron. It went 2k to 0. I mean, yep, then then they know. They know how to play with this shit. Oh, God, carries one. Carries one, but he's out. Oh, my God, Viper's about to get fucked. Oh! No! <laughs> Powder, no! Oh my god, it hurts, you know, dude, it sucks, but maybe you could have bought an item that gives move speed. Maybe you could have got an item that gives movement speed, and, and that could help you there. I'm not sure, though. I think Last of looks good, second. Oh, it doesn't matter, though. It does not matter. It does not matter. And a faker is going to be all right. I'm like really excited because Delight's landing so many of these great hooks. I feel like the only person they would want to go on is Guma, but Guma has cleanse. So even if he does hit a hook on, on Guma, it gets cleansed. They're probably not going to go in on it. So the parry is positioning so good here. Just start Baron. I mean, if you're T1, just start that shit. Trying to identify where the best target is. Peanut does have flash. If you're any other team in the world and you start Baron, I'm going to say you're trolling. If you're T1 and you start Baron, I'm going to say, holy shit, you're a genius. But, dude, so many teams throw by starting Baron at, like, troll last times with not a real way of securing it and not a real way of stopping the enemy jungler from getting in for a steal. I swear to God, it happens every region. And then when, when T1 does it, it never fails. T1 is, like, the only team in the world that starts Baron with 10 players alive and never misses the 50-50. Like, look, they just, they don't care. They just keep doing it over and over again. Wait, who's TPing? Oh my god, Zekka. <laughs> oh my god, Zekka. No, no, brother. Oh my god, Zekka is too funny, bro. I, I just, I, I can't, I can't, with, I can't. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It is Jover. Another Chemtech Soul. Two Chemtech Souls. What are the odds, guys? How, how many dragons are there? Are there five or six? How many dragons are there? Six. So, so the odds of a Chemtech Soul twice in a row is one in six squared. It's one in 36. I mean, the game is rigged. The, the games are legit rigged. T1 paid right off. The odds of the same dragon twice is 1 in 6, though. Oh. Wait, what? It's not about it being the same dragon twice. It's about it specifically being the same specific worthless soul twice it's only that one that is worthless it could be a 50 50 as well it either happens or it doesn't you confuse me bro it's not one in six that it's chemtech twice in a row and, but there is a hundred percent chance uh, that a dragon soul happens every game you know what you're right my mistake Just a 
Okay, okay, guys. I gotta, I gotta shut, I gotta shut this down once and for all. I gotta, I gotta shut it down. I'm gonna go into a a practice tool real fast, and I'm gonna show you guys. Or I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a look at something. Okay, I'm just gonna take a look at something. I'm not, I'm not here with an agenda. I just want to take a look at something really fast. So, uh, let's copy his runes. Okay, we copy his runes. Um, and and let's uh let's let's go into wh what point in the game did he have that second item that last that last whisper okay let's see he got at like 20 roughly 20 minutes okay so he's level 11 okay guys how much hp does Cassante have do, do you guys think he has 3000 hp how much hp does Cassante have and how much armor I think I'd say he has like 200 armor and like close to 3k HP. 299x. Okay. This is easy. This is easy to test. This is easy. To, oh, shit. I went one level over, but it's okay. It's not going to make a difference. Okay. And. All right. Now I'm going to add 100 control shift T. I'm going to. I'm gonna grow my my boy big and strong. Add resistances. Here, let's just make it. Let's make it an even 3k. And for resistances, Control Shift G. Let's make it 200 armor. Or, or is it 150? Is 150 or 200? What do you guys think? How much armor does Cassante have? 150 or 200? 200, right? Okay. Okay, so I'm doing roughly 220 DPS. Single target. Okay, I'm, I don't know. Like, let's say like two, 215. 215. Oops, sorry. Wow. I'm hard missing. 200 ish. Oh my god, I'm hitting. Oh my god, I'm hitting. Oh my god, I'm hitting. Okay, this is actually a lot more damage. Okay, now let's add splash in. Honestly, he had lasses, but not LDR. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about second item damage. Hmm. These guys could be onto something. I don't know. I still think. Delete the VOD? I still think Runons is going to be better, guys. I'm not going to lie. Even though the absolute damage of Lord Doms is higher, right? The absolute damage is, is, is much higher. Oh shit! This is the wrong one. I need I need to use I need to use the right dummy, the one with three thousand fucking HP. The damage is absolutely higher, no doubt about it. But you're not only ever hitting tanks. The farming is worse. The movement is worse. The speed that you stack with the tempo is worse. I'm not, you're not going to hit three people. That's troll as fuck. I think it's honestly generous to say that you're always going to be splashing on two people anyways. Wait, is this game just over, right? Yeah, this game's just over. I think it's kind of generous to say that he's going to be splashing on two guys all the time. To say to say he's going to be hitting three, that's just being, that's just being like... Don't hug me, guys. 
don't you guys think it's troll to like only look at the best case situation for runons? And I'm I'm a runons enjoyer, but I think it's really really like fake stats to be like, well, what if you're hitting three targets? Like, yeah, if you're hitting three fucking targets, then of course runons is like the best item in the fucking game for Zeri or for for Jinx, I should say. But it's like I'm talking about like a realistic situation. I think hitting one other guy is pretty realistic in a team fight, especially in a comp where there's triple melees. It's pretty realistic. Hitting three is like. Yeah, that might happen, but it's probably only in like four auto attacks out of the whole fight. It does make him do more damage. I think it's hard to say that the move speed and everything else about the item is, is not just going to be better. There's two, there's two other benefits to runons. It lets you farm faster. It's a cheaper item. The move speed is, in my opinion, the move speed and the attack speed is going to let you ramp your lethal tempo faster, right? Like the more attack speed you have, the faster that you're going to get six stacks of lethal tempo. And the move speed is going to be more useful for doing more damage in a real fight. Like in a real fight, you're not just spam auto attacking on a target dummy. In those, in, in a real fight, attack speed and move speed are like very valuable tools. Dude, he locked Vayne top in game four. What? Very, very loud crowd. Well, oh, that is uh, a Christmas tree in the river. Uh, there's someone's moving around very, very fast, but that's a lot of people. <laughs> yeah. In bottom lane. So, going to be a very comfortable early game. Sorry, I need to take a look at this bot matchup. Adds Goom on Varus. Nothing makes sense. I mean, it's just, it's just Goom on Varus. Varus Nautilus is pretty winning in this matchup, though. I don't think they win super hard. Oh my god. Oh my god. People run. I'll move my cam, yeah. Great team fights for Zipper's divide allows Viper to catch up on the Zeri. Kind of like how Goomer. Goomer yeah, he needs to get off tower. He's gonna die. Because one thing Rexai is really good at is he can immune the tower on a dive for one shot. That's pretty huge. So he can tank all the way until you know 20, 30 percent HP, and then on the last tower shot he can ult and immune that shot and, and reset tower aggro game, basically. It was able to get a ton done on the Zeri. Oh, they have spotted. Wow. Alone. There's the paranoia as Peanut dives in. He flashes on top of the CC. How come none of HLE plays work? When you go on fucking Guma, the Avengers show up to peel him. They do manage to take down the Varus, but the Zeri, nothing she can do, and T1 will win the scope. And what did Ox just say? You know, the first gank, the first attempt. No, dude, at this point, I'm convinced even Seal Team 6 couldn't take out Guma for free. Owner ults, owner ults the fucking rel w to peel. I mean, it's just, it's just not fair. You could, it's fucking Thanos with the Infinity Stones versus the Avengers. Like, it's just not fair. Avengers have plot armor. That's just how it goes. Oh wait, hold on, hold on, wait a sec. I spoke too soon. I spoke too soon. Sometimes even Avengers lose. They get picked off one by one. That's how. You know, I, I really question whenever this happens, but it's been a bit of a consistent theme, especially since the champion has only shown up recently. Conway, you can just give this up and go for the dragon instead. Carry with the quick int. Coming on through as Faker going to join the rest of his team, Doran. Just uh, watching, well, actually not, tunneling around, borrowing. Oi, 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 oi. Oh, 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 oh. Jesus, you had to take that path back to mid. It was so fucking cursed. Bye bye, Karia. Sucks to be you. Damn, Viper Zeri. Holy. Holy. 
a minute and a half until that dragon. It's a big again, I think scary Jerry. Oh, oh yeah. shit, Caria oh, is actually back. always dead. <laughs> Yo, Caria is sprinting it, he's sending it. That's not what you want to happen against the Zarya Zir comp. Oh, shit. You know, even a broken clock is right twice a day, they say. Oh, shit, it's a T1 Baron. If it was any other team, I'd say that they're griefing this. But because it's T1, it's actually somehow good. How do they get away with it? Wait, why is he so fast? Why is Zayas so fucking fast? Oh, oh my god, Faker! Oh, I fucking, I lost, I lost. I, fu I fucking jizzed my pants there. That was a, that was an insane play. He has Ghost, yeah, I know. He has Ghost, Ult, Fleet, and Trinity Force all proc same time. Made him go 700 fucking light years per second. Dude, 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 I just can't get over it. I can't get over it. How is T1 the only team in the world? They are up 300 gold. They start Baron 4v5. They're up 300 gold. They start Baron 4v5. And it's like a fucking... It's just GG. It's just over instantly. I, I mean, like, yeah, okay, it's 4v5. But Baron... A lot of the time, Council's like one member. It's just like... It fucking blows my mind that they can do this every single time. What if Peanut just held his ulti until it was lower? What if he, what if he just ulted when he was at um, 3k, right? Like like what if like I, I just I just don't understand how they always get away with it. They can't keep getting away with it. You see all these? Oh. It doesn't work against Gen Chi. <laughs> Yo, when when T1 does anything against Gen Chi, they shit their pants. Gen Chi just breathes, they take a deep breath, and T1 just fucking loses it. They soil the diaper. Wait, hold on. Faker is making a mistake. Rare Faker mistake. Oh, wait, what's happening? Zeka didn't do a single point of damage in this fight yet. Wait, they went. Wh where was a zero when the fight started? Holy shit. Holy shit. Holy. Oh my god, he got stunned into the wall. Oh my god, and carry hits those. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. No, I have to see where Zekka was. I have to see where Zekka was at the start of the fight. Dude, is it me or does Zekka play with no mic? That ha like it's either Zekka plays with no mic or like I I, I don't even know like what what is happening on HLE's side? Like the Azir is like, yo, guys, I'm, I'm not there yet. I'm not there yet. Here, I'm, I'm gonna cosplay Zekka really fast. Yo, get the get the dragon back off. I'm not there. Yo, I'm five seconds away. I'm still five seconds away. Oh. Oh. oh okay. R report Rek'Sai. Okay, yeah. Report report Rel. Yeah, you guys are dog shit. Left F. And if he's not saying that in the comms, then Zekka needs to be reported. Like, straight up, like, that's not Zekka's fault. That's his teammates. It's okay. It's, it's either Zekka's fault for not calming, like that he's completely out of the fight, or it's his teammates' fault for not looking at the map. 
Who zones that guy? He just wasn't there. Like, he just, he was, like, respawned. He just, like, he literally just wasn't there. Who cares, bro? It's not, it's not the fact that he wasn't there. It's, like, the fact that his teammates went in when he wasn't there. If they could have waited for... Oh. No. No way. No way. Is Guma just that good? I mean, dude. This is where he lies. Viper just taking thirds of his health at a time, although dishing back a fair bit himself. And so Zayas going. Nah, I, I think, I think Big Baron is paid off by T1. It's the only explanation. I, I, I need to go check like the bank accounts or something, cause Baron is like a, is T1 paid actor. This is like this is like unbelievable how many miracle fucking Baron attempts T1 gets. Jesus Christ. I wonder how much HLE paid for this team. Isn't this like a super team? Peanut, Viper, Delight on the same team? Like this is this is legit like an expensive ass roster, no? Dude, it's Mountain Soul. It's Mountain Soul. For the love of God. Ah, uh, FF. FF T1 gets Mountain Soul. It always has to go to seventh break. Like T1 loves to clench. Oh shit! Wait. Wait, how come my cleanse doesn't work like that? Oh my god. Oh my god. Zeus. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> Why? When Zeus plays Vayne, he just gets like a 500 movement speed buff. I swear to god. What? How come my cleanse does not work like fucking like, like Viper's cleanse? When I when I get Nautilus hooked and I press cleanse flash That does not happen. I don't just I don't just like fucking immediately jump out. Okay, GG. Ping diff. Zero MS buff. No, I mean it's just like I didn't, like, I was under the impression that if Nautilus is QRs, which he didn't, he'd went for Q auto, you would just get chain CC'd. Zay's, Zay's main is insane, yeah. But, like, everyone had a moment. To be honest, everyone kind of had a moment. <sighs> like, did Faker have, like, a crazy moment? He, he just played solid... He just played solid. I, I felt like everyone had a super play, like carry a flash hook. Guma had the Baron steal. Zayas had like the vein chase down pop off moments. Baker was kind of chilling a bit. He was controlling everyone's mind. Yeah, in the back. You can cleanse a knock if you just need a forced movement like flash to move after it. That is actually not true. You cannot cleanse knockups with uh, movement skills like Flash or Ezreal E or Lucian Dash anymore. They removed that like three, two, two seasons ago. <clears throat> That's been changed for a while. That was pretty hype. That was pretty fucking hype.
Finals later. All that to lose to Genji again? Oof. Uh, no, I'm not inspired to play Vayne. Because Vayne is a dog shit bot lane. Pretty much the only time you're going to see Vayne played in competitive is top. I think bot, the only matchup that is even like remotely playable is Kai'Sa. Are we going to see lane swap meta at MSI? <clears throat> I think people are going to lane swap at MSI, yeah. <laughs> MSI watch parties? Yes. Probably will be. Pending approval, I think I'll be doing the co streams. Watch parties is when you can't show the official stream? I don't really know. No, that's called. Is that a watch party? I think that's a live view. Watch party and co stream is the same thing. Team BDS versus Fnatic. Yo, guys, was this game good? I think Faker wants to ult. Oh, he gets hit by Varus Q at the top right. You see that? So, look at Faker's ult. It's up. And then Faker gets hit by Varus Q as they pull the trigger. So now Faker is standing at the back. Faker go in. Arrow, act far back he is. He oh wow, that is pretty big. I was about to say you can't you can't cancel Talia's ult without CC. It used to be that like Talia would get knocked off of her own ulti from just getting damaged. Now she has to be CC to be knocked off. So I saw someone in chat say that Viper canceled Faker's um, ult, and I was like, you can't do that with the Q. But you can lock her out from being able to ult. You can prevent her from being able to ult because you need to be like non-damaged by enemy champions to cast it. Rudge or LDR for crit Ezreal? Bro, you shouldn't play crit Ezreal, but... Uh... <clears throat> I think if you have like no other lethality items, then Lord Doms is supposed to be better. If you have lethality items that can like scale the percentage of grudge up, then you should do that. You probably don't end up in general having a lot of lethality on Ezreal though. Some items are pretty mandatory, like Essence Reaver, Shoujin seem pretty mandatory on them.
Should I ban? Hovering Twitch and Talon. Hovering Kiana. Really selling it, honestly. We have a poppy support. Wait, what happened to my runes? What's wrong with them? Dude, I need to piss so bad. I'll be back. Oh shit! This lobby's stacked as fuck. We have Pants, our YouTube enemy team, and Zven jungle, Will jungle. I actually hate this skin. I don't know why I picked it again.
Oh, she ball. Banger game, banger game. Beautiful rum top. Beautiful rum top. Love to see those kind of plays.
Fuck. That wave is so bad. I have to base. This is what it is. Fuck, I want to deny the cannon so badly, but I don't think I can. Wow. Beautiful play by this guy. Wow. Support diff? Just a plate, killed him though, worth. Oh my god, I missed every creep there.
is this Sona going? Double kill by him. Maybe I can kill him if he plays stupidly here. Nah, he's not going to greed for range minions. Yeah, we're kind of taking over. I don't think I want to die. Fuck, I should just go top. Can I kill him? top one more and then mid yeah I like Harold could also look mid but Good time for me to just base. I got bot now. I 
Actually, Zoe's bot. Zoe's bot, take the wave. Can't move behind you. Dead. Can you go in? I'm gonna back. I don't even think I care about this bit of him. I'll take it. Um, uh, okay, whatever. You can take it if you want. I usually feel like it's not that worth to take mid and hip 20 minutes in. If it's like bot and hip, makes a lot of sense, but. No flash now. Fucking serifs. I shouldn't have flashed in, I should have just killed the Zir. Oh, nice. That was well played. Turret. Ah, uh, whatever. What the fuck? Thought I clicked it.
guy doing? I think even if he shuffles... Not sure if anything good happens to him there. Dude, Sona is such a broken champ though. If against Twitch, it's actually pretty good. Hard for me to glide against her because her ult's fucking long range. Okay, GG. Crazy stomp. GG, that poppy was actually insane. And I think Zven plays well on every role. He's kind of a talented player. Dude, I have this ugly blemish, this this uh, loss, this fake loss training tool game. Why do training tool games show up on your match history? There's like no reason for it. They don't even give XP. What would be the purpose in having a, a practice tool game on your match history? Come on, Riot. Come on, Riot. Synodic Poppy, bro. This guy is insane. He's crazy with it. Jeez, he's he's triple win streaking with it as well. on YouTube asks, why is it important to have Blade on Twitch where unlike any other crit ADC such as Jinx? Um, I guess it comes down to two things. Twitch has a lot of free stats in his kit, so a lot of his scaling doesn't really come from getting early like crit and AD. So if you look at his Q, You'll have level 1 Q for most of the game. Um, it's 40% attack speed for 5 seconds. It's pretty good. It's not crazy, but 40% attack speed for 5 seconds is a lot. But his ulti gives 40 AD. That is crazy. That is crazy. I mean, it's hard to just understate how OP it is to get 300 range. But on top of that, getting a free BF sword. So, I mean, the fact that your ulti gives you a free BF sword allows you to dodge out of having to get a lot of AD because kind of diminishing returns on getting a shit ton of AD, right? Like if you have, let's just say you have a free BF sort of your inventory, well, all of a sudden getting attack speed and other stats is like more valuable because you already have the flat AD. Um, so Bork is good to get picks. It's also good because Twitch has uh, Robert Bork. What the fuck? All wiki Bork. <laughs> who the fuck is Robert Bork? We need to find out who that guy is. Um, you do 9% of their health per auto, which is nice. This is whatever. Honestly, the Bork, the Bork like percentage damage is really whatever. I think it's really good. If you really think about it, 9% current HP is a lot. 
What's really actually good is getting the momentary slow. So it's a 15% slow. Doesn't give you move speed anymore. They nerfed that. So Bork is kind of worse in some ways because it doesn't give you move speed. It just takes away move speed from the first guy you attack. Um, but the life steal is really nice. The attack speed is really nice. It's just an all around good item. I think if you don't have any life steal on Twitch, you're going to feel it. Like having any sort of attack speed is... You just need it on your first item, basically. There's no there's no reason not to have attack speed in your first item. Like that's why people rush Shiv, that's why people rush Zerkers, that's why people rush uh Kraken and Bork. Those are great rush items. But um 550 range on Twitch, farming minions is extremely hard not to get poked out unless you have life steal on your first item. It just fits him well because he opens up on people and getting the momentary slow sets him up to get kills. I need a van poppy. That guy's unleashed. Uh, I would like to go PTA in like some matchups, but not all. Pretty much like I would do it against like Aphelios, Lulu, and Lucian Nami. Anyone else pick first? Come on, first big victory then. Go, go. First pick cannon, let's go. Do you only play on stream? Uh, I sometimes play off stream, like a couple games here and there, but I mostly play other games when I'm not streaming. I'm not streaming, playing League, I'm probably playing like Valorant or like random Steam games. Like I was playing Bellatra, I was playing Path of Exile for a bit, Last Epoch, uh, Enshrouded. Lately I have I've only really been playing Val. Nivia Zeri, we have the combo. Wall into my W, let's go.
with you. Fuck, there are five men in our jungle. Use both thumbs. I know what he did wrong. My fault. Oh no, I already ate, but thank you. Do anything to be two. This.
one off of six. I don't know why we had to go in there. Dad. to give this uh, I don't know I just have to go back bottom and just die on my turret gonna be brutal. I don't think we can ever kill them 2v2.
Okay, back. Jinx is no flash. Oh my god, I missed. Wow, I'm missing on the crab. He's dead.
have all the people to fight. Oh shit. Use both sums. Two for three is not that bad, honestly. But I think Kennen flash. Keep fighting, keep fighting. Fight again with ults. I think it's pretty important actually. such a monkey. saw that. Mm. 
I'm gonna blue trinket this. Hit blue. Okay, okay. Morgana's kind of popping off here. Webcam is blocking the Baron timers. Time, bro. 1.30. Okay, I don't care if my webcam is off-center for the rest of the game. I, I, I could, literally couldn't see how long I'm Baron. It's at the top of my fucking locker.
bro. Like, what the fuck, boss? I did not go in there, though. Fuck. I think Vlad thought he was gonna kill everyone there. Look at the last fight. Shouldn't have gotten hit by that. I could have E'd and then flashed this way. Ah, so sad. I should have E'd like this. Yeah, I should have expected it and just eat over the inhib and flushed away. This fight was hella sick, though. This fight was so sick. I played this so well. Killed him, and then I... Snipe Jinx with my W and got her as well. My mic is too low? Wait, really? Shit, I think it's actually aiming the wrong way, that's why. Professional streamer, by the way. It was kind of fucked up. It was like... Slightly off-angled. I played so awfully this game. Like early game, I don't know. I'm just playing so badly with Zeri sometimes. It's really troll. The best moment of the game for me was when I killed the Monterrey here. I think I didn't need a flash. I just needed a. I just needed a ghost. Oh, that hurts. That hurts. Should have just only ghosted. That was actually such an important moment of the game to kill them both there. Get back into it. What is the biggest bait item? I think on Zeri, both of the like capstone items are viable, so... Some games Navori is really good if you think you're gonna get a lot of value out of spamming W and E. And some games IE is really good when you just want to pump damage and you don't really care that much about your abilities. I usually try to take a look at the enemy champs and see like, is the reduced cooldown on E gonna do anything?
I also think you can get away with going the IE builds when you have an enchanter more. Because like, the whole point of Navori, one of the biggest points of Navori is you get more dashes. But if you already have somebody who is... If you already have a shit ton of mobility, you get like less value out of having more dashes. So if you have like a Shirelia's Lulu, who's just constantly speeding you up, or like a zillion support, it, there's not that much point in having more dashes. Then you just want to have more damage. But that game I felt like against, you know, Hecarim, Cannon, Riven, those kind of champs. It will be a lot better if I can dash more often and spam W more often. Rengar Soner. I could go again then. Let's run it back. <sighs> I played so bad early game last game. I need to like focus up and actually like have a good early with Zeri, which is not that hard to do. Really isn't. Sona farming with Senna support? Augurus. That's a comp, that's a comp. I'm trying to think about how I'm gonna survive this fucking garbage. I mean, I, I, I do have Janna to protect me a bit. The icons above the thumbnails is like, because I'm in the League Partner Program, so all the champs are just unlocked for us. We are first class citizens. You guys are the scum of the earth. We live in a caste system in League. And the League Partner Programmers are at the top and you guys are the serfs. I don't know, man. They just used to unlock our champ uh, intermittently on our accounts. And then they got tired of that, so they just gave us like a... Basically, they just put in a system where there's just like a buff on our accounts. Weird you would share it with us. I would share it with you guys. 
I really would. I only play like five champs anyways, you know? All the, all, 100, all 160 other champs, I wish I could share those free ones with you guys. Really gave him 20 mana, bros. We really gave him 20 mana. Ragey. Wait, what the fuck? How did you know my password? I actually think we can 2v2 kill this lane. Janna has surprising kill pressure in lane. How are we taking so much damage when I'm perma pushing them? Nice, 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 and nice. Double support item, holy poggers.
My red buff just disappeared. I kinda don't want to push. I kinda just want to hold this and kill them. Sucks playing with Janna sometimes because we can't go super aggressive. Well, it's probably not the right time to start that. Sona ulted?
Fuck me, that was so shit. Okay, nice. Fuck me. I'm just dead to Rangar, bro. I should have stood on my fucking boy. That was so bad. I died. Why? It feels so hard for me to um, have a perfect Zeri game. Shouldn't be that hard, but it is just like... It's like the best Zeri game that you can have is just not dying at all early game. Nothing weird happening. They have six wards between the two of them. I don't think we're gonna easily gank this. for that. Two ults actually. Did I just miss another plate? I'm fucking mad. Champion. What the fuck is going on? Oh, no. 
What the fuck is going on in this game? Guess I'll finish static later. My god, how OP is Aesol? I actually can't take the turret. They're just gonna move here. Can I kill Aesol solo? I'm not even gonna try though. Maybe I can, maybe I can't. Rengar's bot, what the fuck? I'm going crazy by the way. I think we can get it because they're on base. I'm gonna go mid now. Oh shit! I'm gonna die, maybe. Never mind, I'm chilling. I didn't even mean to. Oh my god. I think we can stop this. I have ultimate 30, but... Look 
how many wards this team has. Oh my god, Rengar one shot me. Welp, that sucks. These fights are so awkward. behind me. Ringer ulted. Nice. I think I need to get a shield bow at some point. Barely gonna help me, but it's gonna be better than nothing. Mid, right? Oh, this guy ulted on someone that's not me. Seems kind of silly. See you. I think I was bot side right now. Go, go. Maybe 
doing? Tunnel, right? Yeah, you're fine. Nice. So many tunnels. Nice. Okay, actually, we're doing good. This is gonna kill everyone. Vanguard's hard splitting bot. What the fuck? What the fuck? Rengar is on the hard split grind. It's okay to lose bottom hit. Let's get uh, let's get Drake. Oh, we canceled him. Nice. Two point one k in a bank. I need to farm this 900 in base before Baron. Won't be that hard though. A lot of good stuff is coming up. Our top camps, top crab is coming up. This giant bot wave is bouncing to me. Board here. I think this. Ball. Back, back, back. Got a Nexus here, got bottom hip. Now we should set up Drake. I feel like I should actually get just a Merc Sim for this fucking Sona ulti. It's just making me cringe so hard. Ah, fuck it. No, I'm just gonna go BT. Or Lord Doms, one of those. Wait, what? He's on. Trying to solo. Pretty wild. What the fuck? My God. What the fuck? Actually gone. Is it? So close, actually. Wow. What? What the hell am I pressing?
I think I'm just gonna go BT, honestly. Vanguard is actually a problem. Their comp scales really well. Sad game. They don't end, luckily. Poppy is just absolutely useless, I feel like, against their champs. Olaf is pretty tanky against us with double shields and heals. But, um... Poppy can't even stop Rengar. It's like his one job because of Knight's, or Edge of Night being so OP. Senna's pretty strong now. It's been a long game. GG Holy shit, bro. I've lost to Rengar so many times in the same way, too. There just comes a point where we can't do anything about him just one-shotting our backline. 
Which is funny because we have Jenna and Poppy. It's just they get countered by Edge of Night. My goodness. Oh, sad one. Whoops, I did not mean to honor that guy. Whatever. Dude, we need to go. We need to go Zeri one last game. more damage it would have done if I had Lord Doms instead of Shield Bow. I feel like maybe sometimes the Shield Bow versus Vanguard is like fucking cope item. It doesn't change anything about how fast I die. It, it realistically won't ever save me. I guess there was a fight where it did kind of save me actually against Olaf. Let me live long enough. I don't know. It is a good item this game. It is. I think maybe we just couldn't stack Drake's like how we should have, because we should have been on Soul Point. And we also didn't really have a top laner. Poppy's not good this game. Rengar has Serpents, yeah. Serpents definitely does a bit of work there. Damage, Raph. Yeah. I'm just hitting into a million heals and shields this game. Cassio was doing pretty shit damage. Honestly, kind of an embarrassingly low amount of damage from Cassio. Rek'Sai and Poppy don't do damage. <coughs> and they just hard outscale us. Serpents, 50%. Is it? I thought it was 65. Oh, it's 50. Yo, can you guys quiet down? I'm on the phone. Yes? Hello? Who's this? Oh, 
Holy shit, the starting spot on your team, I hear. Okay. No, I'm good. I'm streaming right now. Sorry, guys. That was Joe Marsh, CEO of D1. He saw my Zara performance and he said, holy shit, we need to sign this guy. Uh, Yeah. As you know, my I have my priorities straight, though. I'm staying right here. Would you jump on the chance to play in Korea? Nope. I think you have to remember that it's so competitive in Korea that Prince and Berserker come to NA and they stomp everyone in the region. But in LCK, they couldn't even find a starting spot. <clears throat> they couldn't even get a starting spot on the worst team in LCK. Prince came off of LSB. Didn't he have a break? No shot, you're actually an iron four, dude. I remember I went to Korean boot camp once and we screamed, bro. Um, I think their team name is Fredit Brion. Pretty much no name, low team, like maybe the equivalent of like a Dignitas, to be honest. Like middle to lower pack team. I was asking my coach, like, how good are these guys? He's like, they're they're all right. You know, they're not they're nothing special. So we're scrimming them, and I'm playing versus Henna. This is a this is a lower tier ADC in Korea, right? Scrimming versus guy. Step into lane. Plays the matchup perfectly. Completely steamrolls me in Buzio. I'm like, okay, let's go. Let's go script number two. You know they played well. This is this is what I think we should change for game two. Same matchup. Play the other side. Get stomped. Hen is too good. Okay, no worries. We'll just handshake this matchup for the rest of the day. We scrimmed them like five, six times that day. Every single game, he's just playing out of his mind. Like. Could not imagine screaming against someone in NA who, who was playing that well. If I could play versus Henna, who's like a middle to low tier ADC in LCK every day, I would improve fucking five times faster than any sort of screaming that I could have that could happen in LCS. He's just like it's just it's just how it goes, you know. Like that's the that's the standard over there. Bottom tier LCK is top three LCS. Yeah, I mean it's just the fact. The guy's a fucking beast. Fine. I don't need more enemies. Even the LCK Academy teams usually do really well against LCS teams that go to Worlds and MSI.
Dude, our team comp looks like hot shit. We need like a Nautilus to tie this together, but even then it's fucking doomed, no? I should've went Corky, not Triss. Fuck me. We have no CC. Praying our top plays something like Cassante or... Fuck. Now they have Poppy where it's like actually a good pick. It's okay guys, it's okay guys. Can win, can win, don't worry, can win. Can win. Should I go demolish? And the bones? Should I go demolish with bones or? Hmm. It's kind of hard to say. <sighs> Overgrowth seems pretty shit, so I'll stick with it. Top vein, mid trist, ADMF. Nice. We have so much. So you see this game? We, we win these. We are fucking. Never mind. You know what? I'm not gonna say it. I'm not gonna say it. We're we're good. We're good. Dodge. Do you know who you're watching, dude? I never dodge. Jamican Banana Shaco. Wait a sec, we can win. Wait, we have Blabber and Fudge. Oh shit! Oh, F9. <laughs> Breaking news. <laughs> oh my god. Crypto at three. It's on wave three at some point, but I don't know when. Sad.
Wait, wh what? What is what is my minion doing? What is melee minion Chan doing there? Nice. Fucking worth. Had to make some shit happen there. No flash noodley. Or er, really, I mean. I'm gonna get fucking farmed now by Aurelia, I swear to god. Oops. Oh my god, I don't know why I did that. He's gonna pink both wards. I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. I sold our ward away. That was so awful. He hard out sustains me, so I'm not even gonna try. Can't really hold a freeze with Triss, but I can just farm safely like this. Oh my god, I'm so sad. Got my bone planting. I am so doomed. Oh, Jesus. Wait a sec. The wave is actually pushing back to me now. That's a good thing. Shit, Blubber. I'm gonna ward this now. He has low mana. I don't think that means I can fuck him, though. On Drake.
He has enough mana now. Is this cannon wave? No, it's not. It's just a regular ass wave. Wow, steel caps? You are a pussy. Raccoon time. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna TP. No need. Just lose one plate, fuck it. Wow, top and bottom are kind of owning. Okay, I don't do any damage to him. Literally zero damage to this guy. Trying to set a solo on me. Did I base? Nah. Just to finish Kraken, it's probably not worth. Maybe if I have like Kraken and boots though. in your side. I'm gonna go mid. This guy's low mana. I can finally press my advantage, maybe. Although Aurelia is never truly out of mana, you know? Okay, now he's kind of fucked. I need to pressure him. Pressure his turret, at least. Oh. That time, they're covering him. Whatever. Just get covered then. Well, I get one more wave of turret pressure here.
That made them gank me. Not really worth my flash for that, but something. This guy snorted Adderall before the fucking game started. Why did I fucking hit the clone? My, do I have uh, a very very bad illness. Oh, you got Oh. Jerry, Jerry. Cal Do I have calluses on my hands? Oh my god. Z Zeus is on NA server tonight. Wait, what are you doing? Oh, you're, you're fucking smurfing, that's what you're doing. You win this, you win this, you win this. You win this, yeah, you win this. Oh, no you don't. Of course you fucking losers are four bot lane covering this guy. Of course you are. Of course you are, man. Yo. Who's here? I'm going. I'm getting in there. I don't give a fuck, I'm sending it. There he's mid, yeah? Nice, the tower kills him. Whee! Boom. That, I, I was actually just recreating what Blabber was probably saying while he's in Herald. Oh, 
Oh shit, I've done catch. Can't really help you to be honest. Oh shit. Whatever. Still good. Oh, uh, whatever. Go, 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 Baron, 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 Baron. Nice, nice, nice. I still have TP as well. I could go bot. I mean, I could go top, I mean, with TP. Where's Vayne going? He's just going down mid. My god. I don't want to just like TP in last second anyways. I'd rather be there at the start of the fight. I almost killed. Oh my god. Nice. Nice. Oh my god. Nice. Dude, Trist is fucking broken. What? I almost just like straight one tap their ADC. Nice. I'll just tip you top now, I think. Uh, or I could TP for the end. We end, yeah. We end. We end. I'm gonna TP on the first minion. Oh my god, MF just one shot their AD there. That's hilarious. How did we win that game? Oh, we had Neo Nautilus. Holy shit, let's go. Zarya loses every Zolka game, huh? That is wild. It feels that way. Let's go one last game. I want to end the day positive, 3-2. Thanks for starting stream 9 p.m. EU time. You know, when I start my stream is like complete coincidence if it's convenient for you because um, 
I have the same schedule almost every day. So I get up at around 10 or 11, go to the gym, take a shower, eat lunch. Sometimes I eat lunch on stream. If I'm too indecisive about what to get, then I'll just like fucking goon around for an hour and then order and then turn on my stream, then eat on stream. But usually I stream at 1 p.m. PST. And they usually end at around dinner time so I can go have dinner with Lena or just kind of relax. And uh, then I play Valorant for like a few hours before bed. Quick gooning sesh. Am I going to go to EDC? I was looking forward to EDC so much, but I can't go because it's the same weekend as MSI finals and I'm going to co-stream MSI finals. So I have to give up uh, EDC, unfortunately. Make a lot of sacrifices for, for you guys, but it's all worth it. I'm happy to do it. Playing League is a job and playing Valorant is fun. I think playing League is actually pretty fun. I don't... I have fun streaming. I do. I have fun playing the game. I don't play League all day. I don't think you're supposed to do your hobbies for like fucking 14 hours a day, you know? It's good to have a wide, wide uh, net of hobbies to choose from. You know, I've been watching lately with um, Lena and Anna. Three Body Problem on Netflix. I do think the show is really fucking corny at times because, I don't know, the directors are the ones that did Game of Thrones and ran it into the ground. So I kind of have like a little bit of a bias against the directors. And, so, and also, even if I didn't have a bias against David and whatever the fuck their name is, David Benioff and blah, 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 blah Weiss, D and B. Um, the show is just sometimes really corny, but with that out of the way, I think it's pretty fucking good. Dumb and dumber. Yeah. It's good. It's good. It's, um, I don't know. I don't know how people could say it sucked. I think I think the the story is really good. It's a best-selling book in China and it's just like a very like unique sci-fi story that has not been explored in the at least in the medium of uh not in the medium of like uh a series that's really well done. What do I like about it? I definitely don't like some. Okay, the, I, let, let me just get the, the negatives out of the way. There is a there is a character. There's no no spoilers at all. This is not going to be any spoilers. And do not do not go in on spoilers in the chat. You will be permanent. There is a main character that you meet literally in the first like five minutes of the show. Her name is like Augie, and I find that character to be completely and utterly useless. I think she's just like sassy for no reason. Um, I mean, she obviously has like a big part to play in the show overall, but I just don't like the character and I don't really find myself rooting for her to succeed. Uh, I don't really like the character and I, I don't really know, maybe part of it is just the actress is just kind of like doesn't do a great job. Three body problem this is a show. My other complaint is there's just a bunch of times where it's super fucking corny. Um, I mean, no surprise, like, uh, like there's Chinese characters because the, the book is written, it's originally written by a Chinese author, so there's Chinese characters, and when non-Chinese people just, like, there's, like, always, there's, there's constantly these mic drop, mic drop moments where, like, a non-Chinese speaker will, like, look straight at somebody and just say something in Chinese. They'll be like, welcome comrade in chinese and it's just like 
I know it's supposed to be like chills, so epic, like wow, this, you know, like whoa, this person knows Chinese, but like what it comes off to me as like you know as a Chinese person and honestly just as just as even if I wasn't Chinese, just as a viewer, just like that was supposed to be like super epic, but it just came off as hella corny to me. Um, there's like a better way to do one of those like dude boom, boom drops mic like super dramatic moment. As someone who read all the books, I really enjoyed the Netflix adaptation. With yeah, with that out of the way, with 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 that being said, I think it does a lot of great things. I think um, the pacing is fast, doesn't waste your time, doesn't doesn't feel like any episodes have a lot of filler. The the story is really well done. You can't predict the next. It's very very hard to predict, honestly. All the twists and turns and reveals and. I, I think that the characters are all flawed, which is actually a good thing because it doesn't really feel like there is a good guy and a bad guy. It feels like you're actually watching or I guess like, um, you know, just experiencing a story where like the characters are real. It's not just fucking Captain America, the epitome of like, uh, you know, righteousness and justice and heroism versus the bad guys who just want, you know, they're just evil. Like I think it's like the morally gray parts of the show really make you think and they make you kind of empathize with every single character um no matter like what side they're on it's just very it's it's very well done it's very well done the story is really good it really hooks you in and i think um there are some times in the show where i was like whoa i did not see that one because that's that's really creative that's really fucking sick Two versions of the show were made, one on Netflix, one by a Chinese studio. Yeah, I heard the one by the... Is, is it is it true? Like, I heard some crazy shit about the one by the Chinese studio. It's like, someone killed some... Right, let's see here. I'm going to have to... Murder Chinese studio. Here we go. There was a person who was sentenced to death in China for poisoning the series' billionaire executive producer. This happened... Wow, wait, what? Fucking this article came out today. What about... Okay, so I guess last month he got sentenced, but he, the actual poisoning and the murder of this like executive happened a while ago. Happened years ago, Shanghai in 2020. He was poisoned, so this executive was... Okay, so he started working with the Netflix creators to um, bring it to you know international audiences. He was a billionaire. He did not live to see the premiere on Netflix last, last month because he was poisoned to death by a disgruntled colleague in a killing that riveted the country's tech and video gaming circles where he had, prominent, where he had been a prominent rising star. The colleague, Zhu Yao, which I'm sure I'm saying it wrong, a 43-year-old former executive in Mr. Lin's company was last month sentenced to death uh, for murder by a court in Shanghai, which called his actions extremely despicable. Yeah, there you go. That's that 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 would make sense. It's fucking bizarre, right? He not only killed Mr. Lin, but also poisoned his own replacement. He was testing poisons on small animals in a makeshift lab. What the fuck? What the fuck? Mr. Lin's gaming company, Yuzu Interactive, which goes by Yuzu in English, is no stranger to the HBO hit. Its best known release is an online strategy game based on the show called Game of Thrones Winter is Coming. Wait, this is a mobile game. This is a mobile, this is a Chinese cash grab game. Classic. Classic. Yeah, I mean the whole the whole thing is as bizarre as the Hollywood blockbuster that like he's trying to make. An old fashioned villain. Oh shit. Let's go Trisana again, except not have a horrible time like we did last time. Tragic. 
Why did he do it? Um, didn't read too much into it, but I think he was getting replaced by the executive and he didn't want that obviously to happen. He just wanted revenge. Mobile gaming is real gaming. I think mobile gaming can be... It's like your stepping stone. I feel like the biggest problem with mobile games is just the way they're monetized on average is just horrible. And... It's this cycle of like... It's like this pervasive like... Um, microtransaction cycle of the companies that do really aggressive microtransactions make a lot of money they make the most money then they have the most resources to hire the most talented developers to then make the best games and those games get monetized in this microtransaction model and it just it's been it's it cycle so until the consumer, until the customer just says, enough is enough, I'm over this shit, I'm not going to support this, then, you know, the market has spoken. Like, people are okay with that. And that's why we just end up with super aggressively monetized mobile games that actually sometimes are, like, actually pretty decent games. And it's a bit of a shame because, like, you, you download the game, you're like, oh, this game had so much potential. If it wasn't just, like, paywalled, pay-to-win garbage... In that sense, then the gameplay is actually like pretty good. The soundtrack's pretty good. The graphics are pretty good. Um, but those are the you know those are the studios with a shit ton of money. Oh, also marketing campaigns, right? Like marketing costs millions and millions of dollars. They can sponsor streamers. Raid Shadow Legends sponsored me. You know, like tons of these companies can sponsor um, because they make the money from that model. Shit, should I just go cleanse? I feel like I have to go cleanse. They have fucking Galio Seraphine TF Sona. Like, this is crazy, right? Like, if I don't go cleanse, I don't know what I'm doing. Actually, fuck it. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go TP. I changed my mind. I'm gonna, I'll fuck it. Fuck it. Fuck it. I'm going TP. Fuck it. Nah, just doing it CC'd. Genius. Genius. Ah, oh, fuck you. You dodged. Would you take gambling sponsors? I mean, I've said it the exact... I've had the exact same fucking uh, answer since the very beginning. It's obviously not something I'd like to do and would reflect poorly on my character. But of course I'd fucking do it if they paid me enough money. I think any reasonable person in this world would. And if you are, are if you're like principled enough where there is no number, there is no life-changing amount of money that would get you to accept a gambling sponsorship, then I respect you and you're a better person than me. But I think everybody has a number. You know? That's just how it goes. I mean, even at the very, very top, like XQC, he makes tens of millions of dollars already. And obviously he was offered an amount of money where he looked at it and he was like, holy fuck, I can't say no to this. You think it just enjoys gambling? Yeah, that's not really how like sponsorships work, and, you know. He can enjoy it and he can do it on stream, but when he's paid to do a certain number of deliverables and to do a certain number of shoutouts, tweets, and you know, 
stream deliverables. You only accept that for a certain amount of money if it's acceptable to you, I guess. Anyone who says they don't have a number are lying. I mean, like, honestly, I do think there are people out there who don't. There are fucking people out there who don't jerk off. There are people out there who don't. Like, there's just people out there who don't like anything. Like, everyone, there actually is just like extremes to everything. And I think there are actually people who are really principled and actually just don't care about money at all. It's not that money is like a top priority in my life, right? Like, you never see me like. I don't know, like I don't know how to explain it, but like it's just it's just not like a, a massive part in my life. I'm I'm cozy, you know, but I it's still it's something that I do care about um to an extent. What do I even do with the money? I don't do anything. I don't do anything, man. Straight up, like I'm not going on vacations. I'm actually skipping out on a pretty nice vacation so I can stream MSI because I like to stream. <laughs> like what do I do with the money? Um I buy food. That's a great question. Um, I buy games. Um, I buy stuff for our cats, mochi and tofu. I think like having it is it, it, almost the same thing as when you play a game and you just like, you just farming to farm. It's just fun in a sense to just have it, but I don't have any plans doing anything with it other than just having it, it, it investing it and having it work over time. How many PoE stash tabs do you have? Dude, I, I'm like actually really frugal when it comes to buying microtransactions in games. Like I'm, I like open Valorant, I open PoE and I'm like, oof, $20 for this. And I'm thinking that I'm like, nah, it's not worth it. You know, like that's just irresponsible. I think it doesn't really matter how much money you have. Like some, some stuff just feels like a rip off to you. It really wouldn't matter if I was a hundred millionaire or a billionaire. Actually, okay, maybe if I was a billionaire, it would. It, it, at that point, I wouldn't even look at the price tag of like skins and stuff. But I'll also go to like a restaurant and I'll be like, they charge me like eighteen bucks for this, for like this shitty ass appetizer, and I'm like upset. I'm like, dude, what a fucking rip off! I'm never coming here again. This is like so shit. Like, what a, what an overpriced fucking place this is. But like realistically, like eighteen bucks is like I'm never ever gonna care about it but it just, it's a principle of it that like bugs me. Yeah, I don't like feeling scammed, exactly. I like feeling like I'm, I'm getting a good deal. $18 is like a meal at Carl's Jr. now. What's one quality you admire most about your girlfriend? Lena is very nice. She's a very caring and nurturing person. And when I feel bad, she always uh, tries to make me feel better. Isn't that right, baby? Oh, yeah. <laughs> like when I call my teammates nice guys. Yeah. Yeah, no guys, no. Lena's really nice. Really, no, I'm just kidding. She sucks at League, exactly. Yeah, I never really met anyone as caring. Actually, being with Lena made me become like more of an empathetic person who would like... Yeah, I'm still not the kind of guy who will like truly go out of my way to do nice things for people, but I'll definitely consider it more now. So if I was at a zero, I'm at a one out of a hundred. Now, before a zero out of a hundred for like being, uh, you know, considerate of other people. The grandma. Oh my God, guys. I try. Oh my God. Later for reminding me of this fucking awful story, dude. Okay. So, you know, I started turning a new leaf, right? I try, I try to be a nice person. So we're at Whole Foods. Okay. 
Whole Foods is a pretty expensive grocery store. It's not like Erewhon, right? Where it's not, it's not like ripping you off like crazy, but it's like a relatively upscale grocery store where, you know, everything's marked up by like probably 30, 50%, but you get like higher quality stuff. So we're at this grocery store and Lena and Anna are running off and doing their grocery shopping. And this old lady comes up to me and he asks, and she asks, Hey, what, would you happen to know where the carrot juice is? And it's a really old lady with a hunched back and she's like missing teeth and shit. And I'm like, oh, sorry, I don't know. And then I thought like, you know what, fuck it, I'm gonna do a good deed today. This is an old lady, a classic, classic situation where I should be a gentleman. And I'm, I tell her, you know what? Why don't you just stay here? I'll be right back, I'll go, I'll go get you the carrot juice. So I run around the store, find the carrot juice, where, wherever the fuck it is, find, get, there's only have one carrot juice. Um, it's in this glass bottle and I go, come back to her and I'm like, I found it. Uh, this is the only one they have and it's this much. It's like seven bucks for a bottle of carrot juice. And um, she's like, oh, I can't afford that. That's too much. And I was like, oh, uh, that sucks. You know, sorry about that. But, you know, I'll, I'll just go and put it back then. And then she's like, wait, 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 let me tell you my story. And then she tells me this wild story about how she was at the hospital and she was on her deathbed just last week and the doctor said she wasn't going to make it. And this whole story is basically, isn't that just a miracle? Like, can can we not, can, can you just see that the Lord is guiding me and watching over me? And you know, what really sucks is that I don't have my social security check yet. And I was wondering if you could buy my groceries for me tonight. And I was like, oh my fucking God, I'm getting scammed by an old lady. And I was like, I'm, I'm in, I'm so uncomfortable at this point. She's told me this, this sob story about how she was at the hospital and she was going to pass away. And I was like, this is so sus, bro. Like I'm telling her like, I'm sorry. Like I can't really help you with that. And I'm just confused. Why are you shopping at Whole Foods, an upscale grocery store, if you can't afford the groceries here? There's a Ralph's across the street, which is like a normal person's grocery store. And just like the whole thing was hella fucking sus. And the whole time she's talking to me. And by the way, this story about her, I thought she's an old lady. So it took her like five minutes and I was too awkward to just interrupt her and tell her I got to go. So I listened to the whole thing. She's so fucking close to me. I can smell her rotten breath. It was disgusting it was so uncomfortable i needed to get out of there asap and i go back to lena and anna i tell them what happened i'm like i'm never going to do anything nice to someone ever again all I, all, all I wanted to do was get this old lady her carrot juice so she wouldn't have to trek across this fucking grocery store to find it i'm trying to do someone a nice thing and i'm getting scammed for it like this is fucked up I'll bring the heat. Lesson learned, guys. Don't do nice things. Facts. No, bro, it wasn't seven dollars. I would have bought an old lady carrot juice for seven bucks. She had a cart and she had a cart full of groceries from Whole Foods. It would it, it literally would have been like over a hundred bucks of groceries. Which I also just in general like wouldn't really have cared if it, like her story didn't sound super fucking sus. <laughs> it was it was like a hundred percent a scam, guys. I'm telling you, it was like a hundred percent a fucking scam. Wait, what the fuck is going on? I have support Vagar with Ghost. No, guys, please don't tell me that I have. Okay, thank God. Now, you know what's actually fucked up, though? We live in, like, a sketchy... We don't live in a sketchy place. We live in a nice area, but sketchy shit happens all the time. And then right after that happens, literally, like, the next day, we, we go on a walk, and outside of our house is a guy who is just face-planted on the ground. Like, it, he, he might actually have been dead, but he was for sure passed out at, like, 9 p.m. He's just planking face down, like, just literally just looking like a corpse on the sidewalk. And I was think I was so traumatized by this old lady situation where I was a good Samaritan. I was like, what do I do here? Do I like 
offer to help this guy? Do I poke him? Do I say, hey, what's up? Do I call the police? Like, I'm like, I'm like, I don't fucking know, but this is like a busy ass intersection where a lot of people are crossing. So I got hit with the bystander effect and I just kept walking. I mean, I should have probably called the cops to do like a wellness check or something, but I was hella fucking, I was like so traumatized from this old lady situation. I was like, I'm not going to be a good Samaritan anymore. I might have learned the wrong lesson, no joke. Don't bother laying down homeless, man. Like, I don't even know. He didn't even really seem homeless. Like, the more I think about it, the more I think it might have just... He seemed homeless? Okay, Lena, I, I don't know. Like, I have a really hard time telling homeless people. Like, he just seemed like a really disheveled guy, but he might have been homeless. <laughs> no, no, we're not telling that one. <laughs> In the future, if you call 911, they will ask if you want to stay anonymous. I mean, like, you're not liable for anything if you call 911 and say, hey, this is like a fucking knocked out person over here. Wanted you guys to check it out. I'm pretty sure you're not. You're just doing a good deed, letting people know. If they look like Forsen or Esmongold, they're for sure homeless. Oh. Okay. No, he was homeless 100% then. My bad. Ezreal Rockon. I always wonder, like, is Asmongold always going to live in that rundown shack with roaches crawling over him? Or is he going to move into a nice place with better living conditions? Like, it's it's always, like, kind of just, like, not bothered me, but it's always kind of been on my mind. I bring the heat. Asmongold's net worth, you know, I would say, you know... He's a magnitude bigger than all of the big streamers, right? Like he's at the absolute top. He's he's easily in the top three, top five, like overall English speaking streamers on the platform. I don't know about like, there, there's some like Spanish speaking streamers that pop the fuck off as well. But as far as English speaking streams, you know, he'll get like 30, 50K views, depending on the fucking day. He can get up to like 100K views if like something big happens in WoW or, or an MMO. He is easily in the tens of millions of dollars, maybe even hundreds in terms of net worth. I just don't understand how you could live like that. He might move somewhere nicer if he finds an e-girl he likes. Dude, that's the thing. Like I saw the video of him and his new girlfriend and like I'm, I'm only seeing a very small slice of their life. I get that. I'm not, you know, I really, really dislike when people see one interaction between people and then paint a broad, you know, brush over that. Like, just judge everything based on, like, one thing. That really fucking I'll always annoyed me as a player and as a streamer. And I will not do that for him. But what I will say is, like, she seems... that His, like, girlfriend seems like somebody who would care about living in a clean environment, living in... A, I'm, I'm not fuck this is like the worst way I'm saying it it's almost like I'm calling her gold digger but like I'm not I'm just saying like she seems like someone who's like well kept right not not saying anything else just someone who's well kept tidy how the fuck can you live like that you go visit your new boyfriend and you're living like in filth like how is that enjoyable at all his house isn't clean bro bro like dude you 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 just have to like go watch a video where he's doing the house tour like it's crazy there's one with emiru and tectone just like hanging out with them in his house and they're and asmongold is cooking them steaks and he'll just like open drawers in his kitchen and every single drawer is like filled to the brim with random shit it's like i 
would imagine that the average crack house is cleaner than Aspen Gold's house. You know, like, I, like whatever. You, you can believe, like, whatever. She's there for the money. Maybe, like, it's possible they, they truly like each other and that it's, be, like, the community is being really unfair about the relationship. I don't fucking know. But still, like, an, a normal person is not going to want to live like that. Hoarding behavior? Hmm. Maybe, yeah. I feel like it's... Is it hoarding, guys? Or is it more just kind of, like, apathy towards it? It's not like he desires to just like have like more stuff that's that's my take on it i don't think it's the same thing I don't need more enemies. he's not depressed yeah dude i don't know like maybe aspen gold has like on and off depression he's never talked about it it's, as far as i know he seems like a relatively happy and just like mentally stable guy though i think it's more yeah kind of like what whitefire said it's like general oddness you know it's just like a quirk but it's a pretty strange one to have just hire a maid Bro, I don't even know. I don't. I don't even know. It's just so bizarre to me. Yo, fuck it. I'm going Zeri. He talks about his anxiety a lot, evident by the fact that he doesn't want to stream on his Asmin Gold Twitch channel. I mean, dude, that's totally. It's totally normal for people to have anxiety. Like I've had anxiety. I think if anxiety is crippling you that much, might be worth trying something more, I don't know, substantial, fix it. Average WoW player, average WoW player, actually, bro. What is it about MMOs? Is it really just that the that it's a true escape from reality? Like you can escape from reality playing League, you can escape from reality playing anything. You can escape from it playing Tetris, but I feel like WoW and MMOs in general have like an extra level of immersion where it one time I played so much WoW I didn't shower for five days. I can I can confirm that Lena did not shower for five days. Cause we were playing Shadowlands. And it was just too lit. Like, like MMOs have another layer of escapism where it just it pulls you in so hard that you just like don't care or even want to think about like real life. Breezy. Look at that skin, dude. That Aesol skin is sick. Oh my god, Breezy's getting in there.
I've been having such terrible Zeri games. It's finally time. Still level one over here, what? What the fuck? This game is crazy. I'm not buying a pink ward. Zeri has such a high skill cap. Wow, I have perfect CS. Wow, I'm gonna have perfect CS after coming back to land here too. I'm 19 out of 19 and I didn't miss a single one yet, unless I miss this low HP melee here. No, I'm not gonna miss it. Oh shit. Minus one. Oh shit, did not mean to do that. Oh my god, I just took another tower shot. I'm a fucking moron. Do I have to base? No, I don't think so. I think I can just keep staying. I have so much to stay in from Sona. And fruit spawn on my side.
Nice, nice. Wait, they're not pushing next wave? You fucking weirdos. It makes sense because they want to contest grubs, but we already get the grubs. So I just get to push this out for free. Uh, this as was not having fun. I'm just bullying him. and get this well I could have maybe taken this turret there but that's okay Holy shit, Gwen is 6 and 1? Okay, we need to lock in. And their mid is doing well too. We could easily lose this game even though I'm ahead. Barry obviously has a lot of carry potential, but is a very squishy champ.
Oh, come on, man. Stop it. This guy's fucking trolling. I just saw him shift. Where's my pink ward right now? Oh, it's here. Maybe I didn't have to buy a second one. Oh, you're dead. Okay, well, that just shut them down quite hard. Can't get this. Oh, Ezreal gets mid? Oh my god. I'm missing on the minions. Now we reset and go down here. They just took our red, yeah? Yeah, they did. No camps. Oh, fuck. Not even a... Uh...
Didn't we just sweep our wards? Sweep their wards? Oh. Okay. Whatever. Does he know that I'm looking for him? Looking for that Gwen booty? Yeah, he probably knows. To be honest, he probably does. I'm about to fucking be 100 CS pass. There is. I've been farming this guy's raptors on repeat the whole game. It's pretty insane. How ahead I've gotten. Raptors in base. Oh, what was that ulti? Oh, that wasn't an ulti. Anyways. Go, 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 Baron, Baron, Baron.
I think I need to get Lord Doms and see how much damage that really does. Holy shit, this game is fucking banger. Viper's area. <laughs> says Viper Zeri, I run it down. Tactical Zeri. Oh my god. This game is too good. I think we may end? I don't know. Can we end with uh, our champs right now? No, I don't think we can end. Okay, one more then. Get out of there, Kim Marine, whatever the fuck your name is. No, you're dead as shit. You're dead as fuck. Kimrin. Oh my god, dude. I'm so farmed. I'm not gonna take his raptors, that'd be fucked up. I've taken so many raptors this game. I'm a chicken enjoyer. Vamp off some minions. Oh, 
nice try though. He had to try something there. I respect it that he went for it. Yeah, let's go Baron. I'll get red and then we can go. He's going for the super flank. That was a game worth waiting for. I was like 30 minutes in queue bouncing around, dodge, champ select, dodge, 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 and we finally win. That was hella fun. Just like a smooth game from start to finish. Love it. GG's everyone. Yeah. Honor Aesol, honor everyone. Rexa is playing really well, Sona is playing really well. Am I co-streaming T1 Genji? I don't think, I, I don't have permission to co-stream any regions that aren't LCS. Oh my god, I got quadruple honor? Jesus. That is wild. GG's though, GG's. That was fun, that was fun. I have to let them know. I mean, it's, it's fucking at 1am, guys. I'm either sleeping or playing Valorant at that time. Maybe I will someday. I don't know. Maybe I will. Anyways. That's it for me, guys. I am uh, I'm done now. That was a that was that was a fun stream. It feels like I won every game, even though it says three and two. I don't know. I just felt like I was just like having great games today. Super fun. I think I'm gonna take tomorrow and Monday off. Monday I have a bunch of appointments. Um, I mean, I always take Mondays off, but usually Sundays I do stream because of like LCS or co streaming or something like that. I think tomorrow, just enjoy all the matches. LEC Finals is happening. You know, Kato will be co-streaming that and stuff. I'm going to just go hit the farmer's market, have a have a day off because I stream six days in a row. So I'm kind of, uh, I, I don't know. I, I think even though I feel like up to streaming more and more, it's like good to like take one or two days off once in a while just to reset myself a bit. That was fun though. Thank you, everyone. I appreciate every one of you who watched. Um, check out my YouTube. Check out more Doublelift for clips. Check out my main YouTube channel. Uh, always posting, you know, posting three, four times a week at the very minimum. So I'll see you guys later. Have a great weekend. 07.